slides I'm going to be showing to you for the majority of them is from the U.S. Geological Survey and their website, um, latest information that they have. This is an overview of the um, earthquakes in Chile, and you can see these are all magnitude uh, 7 earthquakes and greater. And this is the epicenter of the Malay earthquake, magnitude 8.8, .8, a very large earthquake. And um, you can see that uh, the yellow here are volcanoes and occurred in southern Chile. The processes here that create these kinds of earthquakes is a process called subduction, where the oceanic, in this case the Nazca plate, is being subducted against the continental margin of South America here. Um, the frictional interface of this zone is what causes these great earthquakes along the west coast of South America. And you can see that along the coast, uh, since the late 1800s, there have been a series. These are all great earthquakes. These are magnitude eights and larger. And you can see the number of these as you come down the coast here. The important thing here is that there hasn't been a very recent rupture in the area of this earthquake. We had the largest earthquake ever recorded in 1960, was, which was a magnitude 9.5. That's the largest earthquake historically ever recorded. You can see in a cross section here, A and B, which is in, um, from Concepcion here and Constitucion down in this region, uh, that the earthquakes do become deeper because we get earthquakes within the um, subducting lithosphere of the Nazca plate. And the, the great earthquakes break this zone up here, and you can see there are very few earthquakes up along the shallowest part of this plate interface zone. This actually was a seismic gap that had ruptured in this earthquake. Here's a better uh, illustration of the seismic gap according to the historical seismicity that's shown here with the red. This is the, uh, this yellow mesh area is the northern rupture zone of that uh, magnitude 9.5 earthquake. And you can see the seismicity is depleted in this area. Strain was accumulating in this area along the plate interface zone. It even doesn't show up in here prior to the earthquake. You do see earthquakes down here in the uh, subducting lithosphere of the Nazca plate. Those earthquakes are generally caused by the pulling effect of the slab beneath the margin of South America. They have what they call extensional. They're extensional earthquakes. When earthquakes occur up here, this is a thrust earthquake. These are thrust earthquakes from this uh, ocean plate being thrust beneath the uh, continental margin. Here's an example of some of the, uh, th this 1939 earthquake, this is the seismic gap that we see between the 28 and the 1960 earthquake with an older 1835, the margins of this earthquake kind of move around, but this is essentially defining the seismic gap where this earthquake occurred. This 1939 earthquake in this area, that's what they call a slab pull earthquake. That earthquake actually occurred at depth in that subducting plate where there's a lot of tension on the plate, but this, this area was locked. It had not ruptured recently in a large magnitude 8 earthquake. On the right, this is a timeline, and you can see this is the rupture area of uh, this earthquake, and it has repeated rupture in very large earthquakes, and its segment boundary up here on the north is very well defined historically in previous earthquakes, as is another segment north. And once we get up to the um, latitude of around Santiago for the 1985 earthquake and back, the pattern is not so clear. But certainly for these very large, these great earthquakes on the southern part of uh, the plate interface zone, they have a very strong uh, rupture history of very large earthquakes. There's very little segmentation, as it's called, in this part of the subduction zone. This is a seismological plot of the rupture um, of this earthquake. This was produced just, I just found it this morning on the web, uh, from UC Santa Barbara. The uh, red earthquakes here are one day aftershocks. After one day uh, since the earthquake, the background is the black earthquakes. And once again, you can see this region was depleted in black earthquakes in here, the historical earthquakes. There were a few minor earthquakes, but mostly you can see strong clusters to the north and to the south. Now, 
the colors on this map indicate the highest areas of slip during the earthquake. This region here in yellow was an asperity, as they call it. It's a place where those two plates were locked very strongly. It ruptured, as you can see here on the scale, 12, up to 12 and a half meters of slip occurred on the fault plane. 12 and a half meters of slip in that initial rupture. And you can look, look, at, the, look at the area of the rupture. Here's, here's the offshore subduction zone, and this goes in way under the coast of western Chile. This was a massive rupture. It completely, the, the inter plate interface between the continental uh, South American plate and the Nazca plate completely let go in this earthquake. You can also see two focal mechanisms here. 